Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about destructuring. Destructuring is one of the most used features of ES6, especially if you are working with React.js, because it makes a lot easier to work with objects, arrays, and so on. Before starting with examples, let me first explain what destructuring means. Destructuring is basically a term that ES6 brought to JavaScript, which is being used for extracting data from an object or an array. And now we're gonna see them in our examples one by one. So here we have an array and normally to access the elements of an array, we just simply create a variable and assign the index number of the array. So we can access which elements we want and then lock our variable to the console. And here is our first element of the array. But for getting multiple elements from an array, we need to copy this step again and again. And let's say we need to get three elements. So we create three variables here and assign them one by one. So we can see our elements here. Now ES6 provides us a new way called destructuring, which does basically the same thing, but in a much simpler way. So let's clear this. And to use this structuring, we define again a variable. And this time we put the variables inside the brackets, x, y, and z, and assign it to our array. Now let's lock them to the console again. Now what happened here is that the first three indexes of our array is extracted and assigned to our variables here. But now you may ask, okay, what if I want to get only the third element, for example, and not the first two ones? So let's see how we can do that. This also has a simple solution. We just need to erase the first two variables here, but we need to keep the commas. So the first two elements will be skipped and we only get the third element. I should also delete this one. So as we can see, the first two elements is skipped and we are able to see only the third index. However, if we also clear the commas here, then the first element will be assigned. So this is also an important point of using this structuring for arrays. The next thing you might ask is, okay, what about a nested array? It is also possible to use this structuring for nested arrays and nested objects as well. First, let's define here a nested array. Let's add two new numbers, 6 and 7. And to use this structuring, we need to define here an additional array. Inside the array, we define new variables, x, y, and z. And finally, we lock them to the console. Okay, now we can see all of our variables here. So these two elements are coming from the nested array. And this is how we can use this structuring for nested arrays. Another usage for this structuring is for objects and it is really helpful. Let's say we have a person object here. And normally if we would like to access its name and age, for example, of this person object, then we had to use the dot notation. So we are able to access the properties of this object. However, if we use this structuring, we can simplify this usage a lot. So to use this structuring, again, we need to create a new variable. And this time we are going to use curly braces. And inside we can write the property we would like to access, for example, h, and then assign it to our object. Now we have access to the H property and we don't need to use the dot notation anymore because we have already extracted this variable, this property value from the object. So we can just log it to the console without defining any, without using the dot notation. So using the structuring for objects also simplifies the dot notation a lot. We can also use the structuring for nested objects. So here we have the address property of the person object, which is a nested object, as we can see. So before this structuring, access, for example, the city value, what we had to do is like person.address.city, and we were able to get back the city property. But also using this structuring for nested objects simplifies this usage a lot. So we go back inside our constant 
and take the address value and inside it and then another curly braces and let's say we get the city value now we can log it to the console again but this time we don't have to use the dot notation okay now we are able to see it so the destructuring is successful and this is a good example for using destructuring for nested objects another example for using destructuring can be inside function parameters so let's create an example function here constant print and i'm going to use the arrow function definition here so it should take an object as a parameter and then we are going to log it to the console now let's call our function and pass the person object inside okay now as we can see our our person object is here now in the older usage if you would like to access more than one property we always had to use the dot notation like p.name p.h and so on let me clear this part okay but if we use the structuring inside the function parameters then we can extract the properties directly here and we don't have to use the dot notation anymore so let's see how to do that now this time i am using the destructuring or destructuring assignment directly inside here and we can write name age and let's say the city and now let me call the variables here and delete the dot notations and we should be able to see the values here so as we can see it's working without any problem using the structuring inside function parameters is very useful especially in react so if you are working with react you will use the structuring a lot if you find this video helpful please hit the like button and see you guys in the next video